Bloomgren. The Owls face Texas on September 2nd to open the season. Coach will take an opening statement before we go to questions. All right, great. Uh, honored to be here today representing our football program and Rice University as a whole. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you about one of my favorite subjects, and that is Rice football. Uh, also excited to be bringing this team into the American Athletic Conference. Uh, I have all the respect in the world for the great players and coaches in this league, and I uh, also have a great appreciation of what Commissioner Oresco and his team have done in positioning the American in the upper echelon of college football. So a lot of excitement at our place about that. Today I brought with me four of our leaders, our quarterback JT Daniels, uh, wide receiver Luke McCaffrey. Uh, should be fun watching those two connect this fall. And two of our defensive leaders, an outside linebacker Joshua Piercy and inside linebacker Myron Morrison. Uh, these four individuals have helped our team have an amazing summer. They've helped us in so many ways, in the weight room, on the grass, in the classroom. And when I say in the classroom, I mean in the meeting rooms where they've advanced our learning of our schemes. And they've also helped us go through and, and train our guys in mental performance and really taking things to the next level in that realm. Uh, lots of people around us and that are here today, some that aren't here today, have poured a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into getting our program to where it is today. And uh, that's one of the many reasons I'm so excited that we start camp a week from today. We bring the kids back on Tuesday night on the grass, uh, Wednesday, August 2nd for our first practice, and September 2nd we open at Texas. So a lot of exciting things in the future. Uh, I think this new league and our exciting early season schedule will challenge our team and our, our team's ability to prepare and compete at a very high level. Uh, I'm excited to watch their maturity lead the way. I can't wait to see their competitive stamina get them up and in the building every day and competing at every practice the way that we need to to be ready for those challenges. I believe the Rice Owls are ready to fly high in 2023 because of really three key reasons and that is the strength of the staff. We retained our offensive and defensive coordinators and that makes for advanced schemes it really allows our guys to feel like they know how to implement the players that we have here in 2023, we've added some new coaches, starting with high school, uh, Texas high school legend John Kay, who at North Shore High was 76 and four in the last five years. Uh, another guy with deep rooted Texas high school history is Jeremy Modkins. He played at Marlin, Texas before playing at TCU and going to play in the league a little bit and then coming back and coaching at TCU. And all his time was in the great state of Texas until last year when he coached for the Minnesota Vikings. This weekend, he'll be doing, uh, serving a minority internship with the San Diego Chargers. He's one of three staff members we have that will take part in the Bill Walsh Minority Program. Uh, Marco Regalado is with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and J.J. Nelson is with the Houston Texans. So they'll bring back some more great ideas to continue our NFL curriculum at Rice University. I'm excited about that. Another coach that we brought on is John Settle, coaching our running backs. You have to look no further than the guys he coached at Wisconsin, Jonathan Taylor and all those guys. Uh, the Martinez kid at Kentucky last year, looking at his resume, guys that he's coached that he's helped grow into some of the better players in America at that position. John also played in the National Football League is where his coach there himself. We promoted Lucas Reed to work with our tight end room. Anytime you have somebody come up through your program, kind of cut their teeth in your program and they earn the right to take over their own room, that excites you. And so I'm excited that Lucas will be running that tight end room. And lastly, uh, a guy I worked with at Stanford, we hired Pete Alomar to run our special teams and be our associate head coach. And very simply, he is the best I've ever worked with in the special teams realm at any level of football. So couldn't be more excited about that. As we know, as much as I love the coaches, none of them will play it down. Uh, they won't cross those white lines next year. So the real reason to be excited about this football team is the players and uh, some of the ones we talked about that are here today. But I think in totality, it's a, total, uh, it's a talented roster that's physically mature and that you see mentally mature leaders on both sides. And you look at the signal callers having so much experience on both sides of the ball, and I just think it allowed us to go further faster this spring and summer, watching the guys work on the field with the coaches in the spring and, and in the, on their own some this summer. And, and as we talked about, the way they led in the classroom. Uh, we definitely have better skill players on both sides of the ball than we've had. We've improved in that realm. We've got more speed, more length, which should lend itself to more explosive plays and, and make us pretty fun to watch. 
But with that being said, I, I believe this. I believe this team will go as far as our offensive line, our defensive line, and our special teams take us. I've always believed it's a line of scrimmage game at its core. You can't allow those, those exciting skilled players to do their job if the offensive line won't do theirs. And special teams, I think, has to be part of this conversation because it starts, ends, and wins football games. Uh, with that being said, I, you can probably tell I'm, I'm excited about what we got going on with this roster and can't wait to get started. But I'll open it up for any questions. To the left. Hey, Coach. Carter Yates with Dave Campbell's Texas Football. I, I read that you first saw JT Daniels when he was a ninth grader at a Stanford camp. And then Stanford was actually the first school while you were there to extend an offer. What stood out to you the first time you saw JT? So there were so many things. Number one, nothing about him seemed like a ninth grader. From the way he threw the ball, I mean, he could really put a lot of velocity on the ball. He had a fairly quick release. He was efficient in his movement. Uh, but the thing that really blew me away was his ability to talk football at that point in time. Like, I'd been with guys in the National Football League that protection didn't make sense to. I'm talking about quarterbacks that played a number of years in the NFL. That they were like, man, just call it protection. Let me solve it with hots. And JT was able to describe to me and David Shaw what jet protection is, what six-man protection is, and talk about, like, hey, look, the line's going to block big on the call side, and they're going to slide away. It's a four down and point protection. And so then I, I just was like, oh, this is amazing what, listening to him talk. And so he, he understands this thing. I was like, what would make you change it? And he said, well, if I get rotation down here, I may send the slide this way. I may do X, Y, and Z, may point it inside. And it was just unbelievable that this – I don't know if he was 14 or 15 at the time, could just talk and understand the why behind jet protection that, again, was, was mystifying to some quarterbacks in the NFL at that time. Coach uh, A.D. Moore and Max Corner, six years removed from Stanford, now being on South Main Street there, now that the fact that you opened it up with Texas is sort of going like a retro going back to the old Southwest Conference days. What is, what's the intensity level? What's the anticipation level? with you and your guys having to face Texas in the first ball game? Oh, I think we're excited about that opportunity. I think any time, uh, I don't know. I mean, we just celebrated the 60th anniversary of John F. Kennedy's speech last year. Like, we choose to go to the moon in this decade, not because it's easy, but because it's hard. Why does Rice play Texas? Not because it's easy, but because it's hard. We want those challenges. We sign up, we recruit people to those challenges, the chance that we'll get to go roll up into Austin and play those guys in those burnt orange uniforms. So we're excited about that opportunity. I think it's something that's got to drive us every day in meetings and in practice. And we've got to be so purposeful about everything we do uh, because that opportunity is right there, uh, September 2nd, 2.30. Hey, Coach Mitch Lucas. I'm from the footballbeat.com and from the Kilgore News Herald. Um, Congratulations on getting ready to start a new season. I know it's this has been exciting this this media day actually. If you would um, just talk about the coaches. The, I didn't know all the changes you'd made in your staff, and that kind of gets me fired up listening to to you get fired up about your own staff. Uh, talk about the head coaches in this conference because all of a sudden, uh, wow, yourself included, the the coaches in this conference. Uh, are really bringing it. This just is a lot of talent here, coach-wise. You're so right. Uh, there's so much talent when you look around. There's so many guys that I've cut up their film and studied for years in the past, you know, and just guys that have been so innovative. And then there's guys that I've been friends with for a long, long time. I've been friends with Ryan Silverfield since we were both in the NFL in 2007 or 2008. Uh, he was with the Vikings. I was with the Jets. And uh, even going back further than that, I was at Catawba College in North Carolina in 2002. And I recruited Asheville. And Mike Houston was a head high school coach there that I used to sit there and talk ball with. Uh, so the relationships are, are, are real, and some of them are really strong. And, but the guys that I'm talking about studying, you know, like you mentioned, like Tom Herman's in this conference. Willie Fritz is in this conference. I remember Willie Fritz running something completely different than he's run, winning 12 games with last year at Georgia Southern. They were running the quarterback. They were running triple option. They were averaging near 400 yards a game on the ground. Like, I remember studying that film. There's so many great coaches in this conference. And uh, so it is exciting and it's challenging. Yes, sir. Coach Chris Gardner, Folks Talking Sports. What difference, what are differences between American and Conference USA? So far, it's an awesome media day. I don't know that I can speak to much else. Uh, the preparation that, 
that Mike Oresco makes your, your whole campus commit to when you're talking about joining is outstanding. The ways we've been able to take care of our student athletes has been awesome. Some of the things, like as we're looking at our schedule, like we play our opener on Fox, we play the next game on NFL Network, and then we know we're either going to be on ESPN Linear or we're going to be on ESPN Plus. I mean, that's exciting. I, I, this is not to knock anything, but there's some games that have been, that we've played on in the past on some services where it's hard to tell a recruit to come watch you. Like, please download this app and go to this part of it. You know, like that's the, we don't have to worry about that. We're on linear TV or ESPN plus or now Fox and NFL Network as well. Early Woodley Jr., the college sports report uh, coach. Spring was a spring. Fall drills are about to happen. What do you see that, and what do you hope for day one fall drills? What do I hope for? Well, I think one of the things that I hope for is, you know, we're always talking culture. We're always trying to do stuff with this mental skills training. But in it, we did a lot of things where we're trying to really build this team and get them to – I think the best teams I've ever been on are, of course, player-led, but they're the ones where you care more about the guy's success in the locker next to you than you do your own, and you're willing to do everything you can to help your teammates and your team. And I think we're there. I can't wait to see it in person eight days from now. Coach, what does it say about Luke McCaffrey as a person that he's able to be a four-star quarterback recruit and then switch positions of receiver and then lead your team in receiving yard? I mean, receiving touchdowns last year. Can I just say he's a McCaffrey? Like, can I use that as an adjective? Like, uh, I mean, yeah, he's an unbelievable football player. He's an unbelievable athlete, but he is selfless too. Like, just watching, like, he just wants to win football games, and he wants to do whatever that looks like. Like, that's what our conversation was about when we were talking about him potentially switching positions. Um, and, and the cool thing was we, we met in the middle in that, Luke, I know I want you on this, in this football program. I, I know the things that you can do in, in, to help us win games. And he was able to say back, I know I want to be here because I like the coaches. I like this, the teammates that I have. And so that was, that was a good place to start from. Then, yeah, he makes the transition last spring. And, you know, I joked several times. It's like his dad was an NFL receiver for 11 years or something because it, it happened so naturally. And it's always going to happen naturally from an X and O standpoint for a quarterback, right? Because they, they know where everybody should be. They know whole concepts, big pictures. But to watch the detail in which he was able to run routes and, and the subtle, subtleties in his route running and then his ability to finish the play and catch the football, uh, that's just been awesome. Thanks so much, Coach, for your time. All right. Thank you all. Go Owls. Go Rice Owls.